Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the On Time On Target Morning Brief, where we invest with fighter pilot precision on a daily basis. Today, we're talking about China's crackdown on Bitcoin uh, over the weekend and how that's going to affect the U.S. market. There are several companies out there that are actually leveraged or tied or proxies, if you will, for the for Bitcoin or any of the cryptocurrencies, So, which makes it interesting to the market because it obviously affects it. So even though the market's in the green this morning, the crypto space across the board is down 10% plus, largely because of, of course, the headline over the weekend that China was cracking down on the miners. Uh, and I believe it was for not being energy efficient, which is kind of interesting. And you heard Kramer talking about this a few minutes ago, if you were on, if you're on early, is that uh, normally when there's a crackdown on production of anything, so mining for crypto, but generally production of anything, the price goes up right from a sheer supply demand perspective. So it's interesting in this case, China cracks down on the production of new Bitcoin, if you will, the, the mining portion of it and the price drops. So why is that? Of course, I think everybody's concerned that China, Chinese government, obviously communist government, not a capitalist government like ours, or doesn't support capitalism like ours does, I should say more correctly, um, is that you know this could be the beginning of the official China banning uh, cryptocurrency. So we don't really know where things are going, but certainly it's affecting the space and it's certainly challenging you if you're a Bitcoin holder. You know, we left this space a while ago for some of the, the headwinds that were out there, but certainly if you're a Bitcoin holder, you have to ask yourself, is this when everybody bails out or not? So we'll kind of take a look at the, uh, the numbers there, the different uh, companies we'll talk about. We'll talk about MicroStrategy, which is MSTR. Uh, Michael Saylor is the CEO. They've kind of abandoned their uh, their business and gone all in on Bitcoin and is borrowing money to buy Bitcoin. So, I mean, the leverage there is through the roof. So either genius or going to be broke, uh, you know, going to be bankrupt. He won't be broke, but, you know, either the company is going to blow up or it's going to cease to exist with that kind of leverage. Right. Uh, so that's what we'll take a look at for MSTR. We also have Riot Blockchain, which, again, is a derivative of uh, Bitcoin. And we can also take a look at the GBTC, which we were in. We're not now. And Ethereum, which are the grayscale uh, black or grayscale trusts that are out there. Uh, if you're catching us, that's what we're talking about today. If you're catching us on replay, make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications bell. If you are catching, uh, if you want to join us live, it's 25 bucks a month. The government come in the room. You have a chat window and a. Uh, Q&A window that you don't see off the screen, which is how folks communicate with me and ask me questions. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back, everyone. Here is the lineup card for today, Monday, June 21st. There are some longs and shorts up in, that I put in the chat window. Let me hit those again for you. So there's some new names just popped in. There we go. There's what I have for everybody. We'll cover that here in a second. All right. Make sure you have your Q&A window and your chat window set up appropriately and use a call sign, please. Uh, standard disclaimer applies. This is a financial education presentation. Do your own due diligence before you act upon anything you hear in this presentation. Full disclaimer information is available at ototnow.com. All right. Mission objectives, grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. This is certainly a grow our money, a highly speculative. You get in the crypto space, there's a lot of speculation. We don't know uh, where this thing is going. We don't know what the end of the movie holds. So if you're going to participate, again, keep the numbers low in relation to your overall portfolio until we know more information. You can always lever up later if it looks like Bitcoin is going to be the thing or you know all the cryptos are going to be the future of money. If it turns out that they're not the future of money and they all go to zero, which again, those are extreme examples. So I don't think either of the extremes will happen. But you know if you do, if it ends up going to zero or near zero, you won't have lost that much. So that's that portfolio management piece. Um, but if you want to participate in Bitcoin, without holding it. Uh, there are several options out there for you, and those are the long-term investments that we're going to talk about today. Uh, MSTR, Riot, GBTC are all proxies for Bitcoin. And then if you like the Ethereum story, uh, you know, known by it, known as Ether, 
but uh, there's an Ether 2.0 and there's a projected 3.0. A lot of the, there's more efficiencies associated with Ethereum because they were kind of second, if you will, versus Bitcoin being the first. You know, and the, the theory there is that uh, Bitcoin is the MySpace and then Ethereum is the Facebook. Um, that, that's what Ethereum holders will tell you. I'm not sure that's true. I'm not sure anybody really knows. But that is uh, certainly the theory why you would want to hold the second best in this case, right? Well, uh, you can make an argument for Ripple, but you can't really make an argument for any other uh, cryptos out there. Uh, but today we're going to talk specifically about MicroStrategy. If I was going to play it, and I'm not sure that I'm not here, I want to kind of see how far this thing drops. Um, gosh, you know, I don't know if... If Bitcoin doesn't hold 30,000, that's kind of, uh, you know, that, then I'm not going to hop in. But if it goes crashing below 30,000, drops into the mid 20s, maybe 20, gosh, it starts to get compelling at some point, right? Where that asymmetric upside that we talked about is there, right? So it drops enough to where you're just like, gosh, um, it can still drop more and it could drop to zero. Anything can. But you start getting into that risk reward ratio where now you really like it, right? Because it gets down so far. So I would actually like to see Bitcoin crash below 30 and then maybe get down into the low 20s. And I think somewhere in there, we have to pull the trigger and say, you know what? The asymmetric upside is there. We have to get back in. But that's a different story. Um, today, I'm talking specifically about MicroStrategy. If I were to do that, I would use MicroStrategy. I think right now it's a sell. It's been a sell for a long time. I don't like the... Um, uh, the leadership team, if you will, obviously Michael Saylor, uh, is brilliant, successful, you know, smart, all that stuff, but using leverage, borrowing money, that's either genius, you're right. You don't know if that, you know, if that's genius or if it's going to take the company to its knees, if something happens, uh, if you watch the big short back in the day, Michael Burry, um, was the uh, individual again that was predicting the housing market and took the big short position. Well, they almost went bankrupt you know, in the process before he was right. So it's one of those things he, he would write, but he couldn't, you know, he was able to hang in there long enough to prove that he was right, where that, you know, another six months or two months or whatever the movie said, and obviously he's now out, right? And that would have changed his life. So if you will, Michael Saylor, I think is the one that they're going to make a movie about one way or the other, whether he's right or wrong. Uh, you know, once this is said and done, or at least once it goes to, closer to one of the extremes plays out a little bit more. I think they'll go back and literally make a movie about this guy. And maybe he knows that. Maybe that's why he's doing it. I don't know. Um, we shall see. So is it a buy, sell, or hold, or is it a hodl, right? Is it a hold on for dear life kind of uh, thing? I, I think if you believe in the Bitcoin, I don't yet, right? You've heard me waffle on this back and forth, and I got that. But you know what? We're taking information in as we get it, right? Um, if you are a believer, I think you probably need to go to hold on for dear life mode. Uh, so you buy it and look away. So I'm not ready to do that yet. Uh, we shall see. Uh, the question today is what is beta? You've heard me talk about this or when I sit down with clients, I actually have a statistics pack that I run them through. Now I don't run them through. That would kill everybody and they'd quit. But, um, but I have, you know, 16 pages of stats for the folks that want to dig into it. Really, the only thing I show them is, you know, I like to talk about the risk score. Uh, and then I also talk about the um, uh, the beta associated with the portfolio, which is basically, uh, well, we'll get to that here in a minute. Um, yeah, I read the book as far as uh, um, the big short, uh, other Michael Lewis books. Uh, I think he's got uh, um, <laughs> Moneyball, yes. And then uh, the, the, the High Speed Network, Liars Poker, yes. But was it Flash Boys? I think he's got as well. Um, so anyhow, big short money ball liars poker. I know there's the high speed, um, uh, the high speed trading book, high frequency trading book. Um, Flash Flash Boys, I think was it. But anyway, uh, you're right. Anything by Michael Lewis is a is a pretty good read if you want to learn more about the uh, finance world and the good, the ups and downs, and potentially illegal or question questionably legal or ethically challenged uh, stuff. <laughs> That's a, they're good reads. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about for our flow today, long, short, open, short, long. Do a market review, headline review. Again, futures are in the green after kind of a rough week uh, last week. We'll take a look at those four investments. If we have time, we'll get into the short-term execution. I do have some longs and shorts. The, the Monday's tough, right, because you have to reduce volume. But none of these stories are really epic, if you will. But I'm more inclined for the shorts here because of the Bitcoin situation. And so a couple of them are tied to Bitcoin. Uh, the riot there. I put Ebon twice with the shorts. That's not what I meant. Um, MSTR is the other one there. So Ebon, riot, MSTR is what I meant for the 
uh, short portion. MSTR, those up at $600. So it's kind of a, a bear to day trade, if you will, because you can't load up on a bunch of shares, uh, gen depending on what your R unit is, right? We'll execute the market open and then contingencies and academic resources are standard. So let's focus on the long term first. So we're going to go over to TD Ameritrade Think Pipes. And you may not like what your, uh, yeah, okay, CO is up over 10%. So we'll take a look at that when we get into the uh, day trading portion. But when you look at the uh, long term, we talked about, hey, the kid, the market sell off, and is it a big deal? It's honestly not a big deal, even though the market has been selling off, right? So your numbers are getting smaller. I hear you. Um, but really, we're going back in time a month or two. It's not that big of, big of a deal. And it was largely induced by the Fed last week, who didn't change much of what they said. And they changed hardly anything in the written portion. During the news conference, Chairman Powell kind of talked about maybe pulling or interest rates uh, hikes up from 24 to 23. That caused the sell-off last week, right? Um, so I, I think there's obviously several headwinds to the, the Fed raising rates. So I don't think it's going to happen even in 23. Yeah, two years from now. I still don't see how that's going to happen. But when you look at what it's done to the market, literally, I really don't care as long as it holds 400. If market, which is well below where it is right now. So a nice green day today, and we probably hold this range. Um, we're not seeing that big multi-day sell-off, which if you'd have to look back to uh, pre-election was really the last time we had that kind of two-week selling period. Um, so I haven't had that in a while, and I don't really see that going on uh, right now. When you focus in on where we are, uh, we got all the way down to this 414 level, and we're already up to back where we were um, basically midday Friday uh, on the bounce, if you will. All right, switching over to the day trading stuff. Again, I'll have uh, these are all shorts. I have three shorts up there right now, um, and I'll probably switch that. I just want to keep an eye on MSTR since we're talking about it today, but I will switch this to a long uh LKCO, we'll see where it's at. Otherwise, we'll switch to one of the other longs. It'll bet Riot and Ebon are going to be the two shorts out there. Uh, Ebon is a uh, eBaying International Holdings has significant exposure to crypto, though that's what's forcing it down. I do like the uh, price point of it, though, uh, for both of these to be able to trade. All right, let's go over to CNBC.com and take a look at the headlines. Again, you're going to see the futures are in the green. So let me refresh that for you. All right, let's take a look at Europe. Europe is up. Asia was down big last time I saw. Look at this uh, Japanese market down over 3%. Hong Kong down over percent. China up. China don't care. All right, there's our bonds below 1.5 and holding strong. You know, oil up out of our range. It's up in the 70s, but at least it isn't going higher. Gold and silver bounced a little bit. And then your big story out there is crypto, which has bounced some because Bitcoin was over down over 10%. So... There's your Ethereum and Ripple, though, all the 11% and 10% respectively. So we'll keep an eye on those. All right. As far as our headlines of the day, I hadn't seen this. Bank of America saying oil spike in over 100. Boy, that would get everybody uh, crying, if you will. Um, a jump in demand coupled with restrained supply. Like, okay, all right. I don't know that I necessarily buy that call, but it's out there iPhone 13 is being leaked. If you haven't seen any, uh, you just uh, type in iPhone 13 leak and, and you'll see some uh, at least initial images, probably honestly leaked by Apple. Uh, Apple does plays that little game. Uh, they won't admit it and you can't prove it. But uh, magically, when there's enough trash talking in either Twitter or Reddit or any of the other popular areas about the new upcoming iPhone, magically some cool shit gets dropped by um somewhere of uh, <laughs> pictures of the new phone and things that'll do. So a pretty uh, uh, deft move there by Apple, if you will. All right, Boston Beer, best idea. Don't know about that, but that's truly. And if you remember Sam Adams, there's the Bitcoin drop. Here's what I haven't heard much about is American, American Airlines cancels hundreds of flights. Uh, I think that came out this morning or late last night. So I had to look at my flights, make sure I wasn't on American for my trips that I'm um, taking starting Friday. Um, no exposure to American, um, but uh, it'd be interesting. Uh, Amazon Prime Day, which is today and tomorrow, I believe. I think it's a two-day deal now. So if you're dying to spend money, get out there and do it on Amazon, please. As Amazon shareholders, we appreciate it. 
Here's your MicroStrategy, now, now owns over 100,000 Bitcoin. So that's a lot of zeros, right? So if you take that one and now put the price of Bitcoin at 30,000, uh, you know, that takes you out to the 3 billion mark is how much they own. Um, we shall see. All right. Just saw your comment there, uh, Predator. Yeah, or Apex, sorry. The, uh, you know, reaction to concern over the Delta variant. We'll see. I mean, COVID can throw a wrench into things on the new mutant strain, but obviously you don't see it in the headlines here. But yeah, if there's some legitimacy to it that it's going to be a huge threat, uh, yes, of course, that would affect the economy and the market. All right, have a few minutes, I have about 30 seconds for the open. So we're not gonna take a look at the chart of any of that stuff until we get over to get through the open. So there we are, give me a second to get things set up. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time On Target play of the day. We have 10 seconds to the market open. You have four screens in front of you. All are one minute charts. We have the S&P 500 on the far left, obviously trending in the green. Things are going well this morning. Here's the opening bell. We have one long here in Wish. It's up 5%. Wish is, there's no, there are no huge story with it, but it's a company called Context Logic. Uh, selling, you know, just not up 5% anymore. Here's your Riot blockchain bouncing hard. Um, we we're going to short it here. It's already bounced up out of the window. Again, people are probably buying that. And then Ebon is a similar story, except for it's a much lower price point. Um, it is called uh, eBang International Holdings. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll watch the price action there. All right. In addition to Wish, don't know the storyline, so I don't really know when to take it. AYTU is a biopharma firm. Kind of like this entry here, made an announcement of some sort. I didn't uh, write it down, um, but I do kind of like that for uh, for going higher here. Again, nice, uh, nice 10 cent uh, stop. We'll see if we can get an entry point on that. All right, too much strength in Riot, Ebon. I'm going to give up on that and see what's going on. MicroStrategy again, MSTR would be a short. You're looking at a $6 stop if you want to hop into something like that. Again, that's that 1% move. There's probably more people buying that in this insanity than there is selling it. So that would be a tough one. I too, so I'm not really seeing any of these setting up how I like it. Let's go to that LKCO. It is up over 10% now. At the low of the day at 255. It's hard to use a 10 cent stop. You'd almost have to use a five cent stop to get in on a name like this. See the market striping down in the red that would support the shorts. So not really looking at taking LKCO unless the market would flip. I do like that it's down here though. Getting a new low of the day. If you're dying to trade this, uh, anybody 250 i would use a four cent stop 255 low of the day and then take 259 higher but the market's got to flip so it'd be wait for the green thing read for the green in the market and then take 250 take this higher uh riot busted there's no way you could take that short now it's down almost uh three percent got a new low in LK lkco too hard to trade mstr let's look at some other names Wish GLBS, did I bring up GLBS? GLBS, that's a shipping story, up over 10%. Open down here at 550, so it's up north of that. Went up 25 cents already. 
Yeah, I'm not inclined to try to hop in and trade any of these. So they just aren't uh, don't have that rock solid story behind them, and the market don't really know what the market's going to do. If you wanted LKCO, you could go 250 with a 254. I'm not taking this, but if it holds 250, take 254 higher, which gives you the the math sets up pretty good. 258, 262. 266 as far as your exit. So again, I like the math, but I don't know the story and I'm not, I wouldn't take this on my own. But if you're looking for a trade, take uh, take that one. But we'll see. All right, anyway, I'm switching out of this, going back into long-term mode, see what's going on around the world. Okay, winners is up, AMC meme stock still up. Some uh, CBD names are up. Sony, tech name up, AVAV, haven't talked about AVAV in a while. Remember, if you like drones, this is kind of your pure drone play. I should do a show on this, even though I don't think anybody would watch it, um, so I probably won't. But uh, it's certainly interesting stuff, and being a pilot, you know, I love, love the idea of all the uh, million drones that are out there. I want to back this out a little bit. The big run up from 60 up to 140 was back here. This is again before and through the election, if you will. So anyhow, pure uh, pure drone play if you like it. Looks like the move's already been made though. So you'd have to love it. No, I don't necessarily love it for the, um, the entry point here. PPTY, I'm still buying here, even though you look at this chart, it's been kind of straight up. You still have the long-term inflation fears um, you still um, buying property in the U.S. Again, there's only so much of it, so there's a lot to a uh, lot to like about PPTY uh, long term. We'll get back to Wish in a second. Uh, that was that was uh, three minutes ago, so probably didn't probably didn't uh, set up after all. So MNMD Mind Medicine down a little bit. Let's take a look at that. So we talked about it at 320. It's just basically hanging out. I did not realize it touched eight dollars. How did I miss this move? 320. Yeah, that, that was before we were in it. It was uh 320 in here is when we got back. Uh it was the level we got back in. It's probably actually here, actually, a month and a half ago or so. Um, I did a show on it. So uh mind med, you know, interesting long-term uh, thesis, but selling off today a little bit. NVIDIA, you saw Kramer names his dogs NVIDIA, he just got NVIDIA too. A uh, new puppy this weekend for Father's Day. palantir has been getting hit a little bit. Let's take a look at the PLTR. You know I like it long term, but uh, the CEO pay is the, the huge negative that's out there on that. Dropped all the way down to 16, now up to 25. Looks like it's got strength in the name even though it's off today. All right, switch back, take a look at Wish. Maybe I didn't look at it, I can't remember. Yeah, it did set up, you're right, because you have three minutes selling off. You'd have to have gone a uh, 1167, 1177 entry. So 87, 97, 12.07. That's a 3R move if you caught it there, uh, Apex. I was not looking at it. Obviously, it didn't hold, so you can't do it. Uh, can't do it. No entry point now. Hey, look at this one. The one I uh, said I didn't do, uh, wasn't going to do, actually would have worked. So it did hold that with a uh, four cent stop here in LKCO. That would have worked as well. So both these longs would have worked as the uh, the market flipped there. But I wasn't bold enough to take either of them. All right, let's switch out. Yeah, I don't blame you for not trying it. <laughs> I didn't try it. I didn't want any part of it. All right, let's go back and talk about some of this, uh, where MSTR is. So come back here. Lost my sharing screen, there it is. I didn't lose it, just was looking in the wrong spot. All right, here we go. Got it shared out correctly. What we're looking at is Finviz. We're gonna take a look at the long-term story in uh, MSTR. So it was down at 460 in this range. So really from the sell-off in um, Bitcoin, this thing should be trucking back down. I would not really be interested in buying it until it broke a new low here. 
So it looks like it bounced off 425 twice. So it really, I mean, it'd have to get down in the 400s, which is kind of that uh, panic selling that people talk about. So that's two thirds a drop. It'd be a, have to be a 35 cent drop really to be able for this thing to be a buy, right? So all the people that bought it here that have been up money for a long time would have to basically roll over and sell back out of it. So um, don't really, uh, no way to really buy it here. Let's see, we're going to look at Riot, again, which is an ETF, which follows the blockchain technology, which is not pure, right? It should be, it should be following blockchain technology, not necessarily uh, Bitcoin, but it does kind of travel with Bitcoin. So it's getting hit today. So 30, again, it would need about a 35 cent sell off before I would be interested to have to break down that uh, 22 range. All right, and then GBTC, we were in that for a while, and got out, haven't really looked at it. Uh, you gotta pull it up in Yahoo, so let's do that. Yahoo, GBTC. Get this pulled up. What you say, chart not available. Yes, you are. All right, pop up on this screen. I bet the chart is available. Go to a six month chart. There we go. So yeah, we were in here. Remember it was the below 50 buy. Yep, got out of that. Probably pretty happy we did for everybody down in the uh, 30s uh, now for ET, or for, excuse me, for GBTC. Again, 2% is your is your, is your uh, fee. So, I mean, that's just pretty tough to, to overcome. And then Yahoo Ethereum, which I should be able to pull up right here. Not quite as familiar. That's ETH, we want ETHE. Here we go. This is the Grayscale Ethereum Trust. So again, uh, second mover, if you will. Uh, that's where we are with Ethereum. It was up at 40. It's basically lost 50% in what, since May 11th. So that's a whopping month or so um, ago, a month and a half, almost uh, 40 days, if you will. So down at 20. If you believe in it, this is a pretty good entry, entry point, to be honest. So anybody who's bought it since uh, March is now down money. So a lot of people are selling out of it today. So not a bad play. If you believe Ethereum, you can pick some up here. Okay, that's what I've got. Last thing I'll talk about is beta for the day. So again, it's a measure of volatility or systematic risk of a portfolio compared to the market as a whole. So if think using risk scores, which you know I talk about, uh, 75 is the risk score. If you're above that, you have a higher beta than the market. If you're below that, you have a lower beta than the market. So what does that mean? Blah, 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 right? So if the market goes up 1% on a day, your portfolio, if you have a higher beta of like, you know, 1.1 plus anything, um, that means your portfolio should go up uh, relation, if you know, fractionally, if it's 1.1, yours would go up 10% higher than the overall market. If you had a beta of two, it would go up double. So if the market went up one day, you would go up 2%. Same thing in reverse. If you have a um, below one, so say it's a 0.5 beta in your portfolio because you have a lot of bonds or cash or munis or stuff like that, then you, when the market drops 1%, yours would drop half a percent. So it's that measure of that. If it's negatively correlated, you could argue that um, gold is negatively correlated to the stock market. So if the stock market, if you had a negative one beta, if the stock market goes down a percent, your asset, in this case, we're talking gold, would go up a percent. So again, when you're looking for hedges like gold or tail, or you're buying puts out there, they're making your portfolio act opposite what the overall market is doing. So kind of down in the weeds, but if you want to take a look at it, uh, you know, here's your uh, shake your head at Monday morning math. It's the, you know, covariance divided by the variance. Have fun with that. I'm sure I knew what that meant at one point in time. Uh, I don't know and don't care really anymore because I understand it a little bit differently and it's measured for you. So you don't have to calculate it. But here's your types of beta value. We just talked about one less than one greater than one or negative. Um, now, beta in theory versus practice, you know the difference um, that theory doesn't always hold up. So your portfolio could have a 1.1 uh, 1 beta. That means when the market goes up a percent, yours should be up 1.1% and yours isn't, right? Well, 
There's a lot of things that go into this. So it's more of a theoretical measure of your portfolio than a, than a true hard hang your hat on uh, portfolio. But over time, it would average to be up that 10% in a market up situation or down more in a market down situation. So, all right, that's all I've got for you today. So a couple of trades out there that we didn't get in on. I'm looking back and I just got to show you this LKO chart just real quick because it's kind of sickening because it just powers higher. Um, let's see, here we go. So yeah, look at this thing. So that nice entry point down here in the uh, 254 level, it's up at 272 now. So it's really like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's about an eight R move higher uh, that it had there. So, all right, there you go. With that, uh, no meeting tomorrow. No meeting tomorrow. I will uh, send that out to everybody, but we'll be uh, on the road for a day trip tomorrow for volleyball uh, for a um, division one camp that we've got. And then uh, everything's back on normal for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So no meeting tomorrow. We will see you back Wednesday. You have a good one. Bye.